Now that we have our basic car movement working, we also need a camera that follows the car. So for this, we are going to use Cinemachine. So go into Windows and then go for Package Manager and uh, select Unity Register and type Cine. And it shows up Cinemachine, hit install and let it install and then just press the X button when it's done. So now that we have installed Cinemachine, go under Game Object and select Cinemachine Virtual Camera. So this adds a little icon here to our um, main camera and that's because we are running the Cinemachine brain. And with it, it means that actually our main camera is no longer being controlled. So the values here uh, do not matter anymore because they are driven by the virtual camera. So all changes that we need to make to our camera is under the virtual camera. And first of all, we need a, a follow target here. So let's assign our car to the follow target. And if we look at our game, let's actually, uh, let's split our game view here. Uh, so if we look at our uh, game camera, we can see that it, it's not actually targeting the car. And it's because of our settings in the virtual camera. So the rotation, let's put it at zero in the Y direction. And then in the Z, X direction, we want it to be 20. So now we can actually see our car, but we are, um, well, not following it as we want. We want to be able to see something. So let's change our transposer here on the body. And uh, we want it to be closer. So maybe minus 1.7. And then we need to aim uh, above the car a bit. So let's add an offset to it y of one all right brilliant so now we can actually see ahead and we are staying behind the car and uh, if we then hit play then it uh, will follow the car and uh, yeah that's great so now we are actually following our car but uh, when we are hitting the accelerator we can see that the car is actually moving uh, forward and if we're braking then we are uh, catching up uh, so this is a something you don't really want in this game where we have uh, extremely high speeds you could probably play around with it and have some of it but uh, i actually don't like it that much so i'm gonna reduce the y dampening and z dampening so now that we are running it uh, is uh, a lot snappier. All right, so when we're braking, we are staying exactly where the car is. So that's perfect. So some of the things I learned in Pixel Driver is uh, how to get a sense of speed that you feel that, oh, you're really driving fast. And one of the things is actually obstacles and overpasses. So like bridges and uh, tunnels, etc. So if we uh, add something like uh, an, uh, a fake obstacle that we can drive under. So let's just go under uh, game object here and create a regular cube. Uh, so if we take our cube here and we just move it ahead of the, the car here and uh, lower it. So well, maybe not that low something like that and let's uh, scale it in the z oops not in that direction in the z direction so we get a nice long obstacle here so this uh, will represent something that we can drive under like a very low tunnel or uh, overpass actually let's get it up a little bit so if we run now we will uh, be able to drive here and uh, we are coming up to this obstacle and uh, we are just going through it so we want our camera to be able to react it actually gonna raise it a little bit more so what we want is the cameras to sort of dodge this obstacle so it goes below it and you can uh, get a sense that uh, the camera is lowering towards the car and that will increase the sense of speed and it brings some dynamics to the car and, uh, and the whole game so that's uh, a good feature now Cinemachine has a built-in feature for this and in pixel driver we're actually not using it we are doing a raycast from the camera uh, in the forward direction to detect anything ahead uh, and then we are sort of lowering the camera but we are going to use the out of the box solution which is the cinema machine uh, component for it so let's add an extension and we are going to use cinema machine 
Collider. So the Cinema Machine Collider will ob uh, avoid obstacles, uh, but it says here it requires a look at target. So let's assign a look at target to our look at. So let's have the car as well. So that uh, yeah, shouldn't really change anything other than that we're looking at it. So the aim, we are setting it to do nothing. So it leaves it exactly as it is. So it's not going to try to change anything. Uh, but then it enables us to use our Cinemachine Collider here. And our strategy that we are going to use is pull camera forward. So as we are approaching an obstacle, it will actually uh, pull the camera towards the car and uh, then we have some distance limits and uh, camera read readers that we can play around with so I think that we are just gonna try it as it is with the uh, basic values and you can see what will happen so if we drive here and we are hitting our obstacle uh, it moved the camera straight down so now it's actually below our uh, obstacle and then it will go directly out so it's very snappy and it doesn't really feel that nice so let's add dampening when included so um, let's bring it up to i think something like 0 0.48 will be okay and uh, otherwise we can uh, leave the dampening how how quickly should it return to normal well we want it to actually be similar maybe a little bit faster actually so if we try it now, right, let's go forward. Now we can see that, okay, we are moving below a little bit faster. Maybe it actually was a bit too fast, but we have to think about that we're going to do this at very high speeds. Uh, right. So there is, however, one uh, thing to consider and it's uh, when we are doing this the camera is actually detecting uh, the collision right where it is so if we look at our view here uh, the camera needs to pass into this collider before it actually starts to lower it which causes this uh, rendering problem because we are no longer seeing our or the top of our obstacle uh, so what we will need to do is we need to separate our uh, collider here and uh, have that different from what is happening in the world so we need to set up a layer for that so what we have is obstacle collide against default and we need to create another layer so it actually re reacts quicker and we have to pull out that uh, collider for those objects and the easiest is uh, to duplicate them and uh, use um, uh, a different setting for them so uh, it creates a little bit of a hassle but uh, it's not that big of a deal so uh, let's create a new layer and we'll call it camera collision detection and then we are going to use that layer and not the default layer. And uh, if we have then our overpass here, uh, we can uh, then duplicate this collider here. And uh, let's actually duplicate the whole object. And then we will remove our renderer and just keep uh, this and we'll call it camera glider and let's make it a child of this object and then change our layer to camera collision detection and as well change the size of it so we need it to be maybe 1.2 something like that or 1.4 so if we try it now we will have uh, better dodging of the camera and uh, it will start earlier minimizing the risk that we are actually hitting the whole object so if we once again lower the whole thing and try it again then uh, it will dodge the whole thing there we go 
And, I mean, this needs to be adapted to your game world and uh, how your game will work. But it's a pretty good uh, out-of-the-box solution. So, but for now, let's get rid of this because we're going to use models for that instead and uh, not uh, have just uh, boxes. And then we can bring back our camera so it uh, behaves like it should or not our camera or a game view. And then have a look at our scene again. The next thing we're going to focus on is improving our car's handling, because right now uh, it uh, doesn't feel very well. Uh, when we are going to sideways, for instance, it is uh, well moving very quickly and uh, it uh, is not returning back once we let go of the keys, which we want in this type of game, so that the car will straighten itself and move uh, forward. Uh, as well, we want uh, the at least illusion that the car is rotating, so we want to get a feel that uh, something is happening uh, to the car when we are turning, and not just only moving uh, in the sideways direction. But first, let's actually build up our road a little bit here, and uh, we're going to take our section here and make a prefab out of it. So let's create a new folder, prefab, and take our section, and uh, I will name it PF and it will be endless section base so this will be the base that we're using later on when we're generating all of our endless train uh, but for now let's uh, just duplicate this and go into global so we have our snapping and make sure it's enabled and let's add just a few sections here I could, of course, change the snapping so it uh, is the correct size, but it doesn't really matter. We're just going to use this for testing. So uh, now we uh, can focus on actually just uh, testing the driving ability of the car a little bit and uh, working on the things we uh, mentioned earlier. So let's go into uh, scripts and select our car and go into the car handler. So let's start with improving our steering. So right now, uh, we just have this very simple code. If we have uh, some type of input in the X direction, we are going to move the car. But a car in the real world can't uh, actually uh, move or turn when it's stationary. So let's add um, a way of uh, handling that. So we will uh, add a speed based steering limit. So it means that uh, if we're going to slow, uh, we are actually not going to allow the player to uh, steer sideways. So we are taking our uh, rigid body velocity in the Z direction and we are dividing it by 5. Uh, and this is a value as well that you can play around with. But uh, essentially it means that if we are uh, driving uh, at at least uh, 5 units, then uh, we are going to get 100% steering. So if we are below that, it's going to start to reduce our steering. So we want it to be a percentage value. So it's going to be between 0 and 1. So let's clamp it down so it becomes 0 and 1. And then we are taking our uh, transform right times steering multiplier times the input. And let's add times speed based steer limit. So that will force our car not to steer when we are stationary and it will steer less if we're going slower. Then we want to be able to have that uh, a feature that allows the car to uh, auto center. And uh, what we are going to check is uh, a few more things. So we are going to uh, see what our um, max steering limit is that we haven't yet added but we're going to uh, limit so uh, when we're going sideways that we can't go too fast so we're going to add a max steering velocity similar to this so we're going to have a limit which is our, going to be our max velocity so we need to add that as a 
variable up here. So let's add a few max limits values. And the first thing is our maximum steer velocity, which is going to be two as a start. Uh, so now that we have divided that, we uh, get my version of a normalized value. And uh, our normalized value is going to ensure uh, that we are not going outside of our limit, which is going to be between uh, minus one and one. So we're clamping it down to that value. And uh, we are going to make sure that when we are uh, adding our sideways movement that it's uh, not going above this value. So we're going to make sure that we're staying within the speed limits here. So we're taking our rigid velocity and we are saying that, okay, it's going to be a new vector three and we're taking our normalized X times max steer velocity. And we are, uh, we can never have a velocity in the Y direction anyway here. So we're putting it to zero and then we're taking the value uh, of the velocity of whatever we had before and applying it again. So uh, then what about our auto center feature? So we want the car to stabilize uh, once the player lets go of the uh, sideways input. So let's add a else here. And uh, we want it to to slowly stabilize in the sort of driving direction which is forward uh, so what we will do is we'll take our rigid body velocity again and make a similar to this a new vector 3 but we're going to lerp it and we're lerping from our current velocity to uh, a new vector 3 which is going to be zero so we're lerping towards the uh, the zero in the x and the same in the Y because, well, that doesn't really matter. And we're keeping our speed in the said uh, direction. So we're just going to keep on moving. And uh, then we are uh, uh, multiplying it with uh, uh, time dot fix delta time times three. I usually add this. Uh, it doesn't really matter because uh, our, uh, we're doing this in our fixed update. So it's already running at a fixed time, but I usually like to keep this. And if you move it out of a fixed update, then at least it will um, not freak out. And after that, we want the car to rotate when we're steering, uh, but we're gonna fake uh, the rotation because we're not going to rotate our rigid body. It's easier if it's always in the forward direction because then we don't have to think that much when we're doing uh, things later on. Uh, and from a game perspective, it actually still feels good. Uh, so um, we are not going to rotate our rigid body. Instead, we are going to take our game model uh, and rotate that and we are going to do that in our update. So in our update, we can uh, handle the rotation. And uh, what we will then do is when we are turning, we are going to take our game model, transform rotation and uh, make a quaternion uh, or create a new quaternion from Euler angles. And we are going to rotate it zero in the X direction and base the y direction on the rigid body velocity in the sideways direction times five and then we are going to uh, have zero in the z direction we don't have to uh, care about multiplying it uh, with delta time because uh, it's already lerping anyways and i mean you could smooth it even more but it's it's good enough as it is and uh, this value is of course uh, something that you can adapt. So a higher value here will uh, rotate it faster and make it snappier, but uh, I think I will leave it with five and try that. And right now our car doesn't actually have a speed limit. So as long as we're holding down the accelerator, it will just keep on accelerating all the time and applying this uh, force. 
And uh, we want to have a speed limit for our car, so let's add a float max forward velocity, put it at 30. And uh, in the accelerate function, we are going to uh, limit how, how much force we can apply. And uh, what we're going to look at is the velocity. So if the reader body velocity in the Z direction is larger or equal than max forward direction, uh, or actually, uh, yeah, if it's uh, larger, then we are going to return. Uh, otherwise, so we're going to stop the function there. Otherwise, we are going to apply our force here. And uh, yeah, I think that there is one final part that uh, we'll add. And it's uh, we, we don't ever want our car to go backwards. We want to make sure that uh, it's uh, always going forward or standing still. Uh, because, as I said before, we, we can't handle it very well if it's going backward. So we are going to make sure that it never can go backward. So we're checking the velocity in the z-direction and saying that, hey, if it's below zero, then, you know, make it zero. Uh, so that will stop uh, things from becoming more complicated. Uh, anyways, our car is sort of going to explode whenever we hit something. And even if you don't do that, you can have some other recovery method like uh, allowing it to pass through the object it's hitting or something like that. So, but uh, for now, let's leave it as, at, uh, as this and uh, try it in Unity. So uh, let's select our car and we need our game model assigned here. So let's assign our game model. And uh, then let's just save and uh, try it. So if I push the accelerator, uh, I can see that, yeah, it's moving forward and eventually there's a limit and I can brake as well and uh, I can move sideways and it feels quite good. Uh, if I'm standing still, I can't turn anymore. So again, if I'm holding the key, letting go, it's actually auto-centering quite uh, decently. Uh, so there is, however, one thing in Unity which is uh, annoying when you make, well, I think it's annoying when you make games like this, and it's uh, that the input is um, not very snappy. And when we're driving fast, we want it to be snappy. We can handle like, uh, the feeling of uh, having a heavy vehicle with the physics instead, instead of having it by the cars uh, or by the inputs being uh, sort of laggy. So the reason is um, if we go into project settings and if we look at uh, input manager, then we can see that, okay, we have some axes here and uh, they have uh, this thing called gravity, uh, which um, uh, simulates uh, how it would feel like if you would have a, like a joystick or a gamepad with a thumbstick. So instead of having three here, let's put it to 1000. Same with vertical, put the gravity to 1000. Then uh, we will have uh, very snappy keys. So whenever we're pressing uh, forward or sideways, it's going to uh, react. Uh, so if we try it again, we can see that, okay, it's actually, well, it's hard for you to see, but it feels, I mean, a lot better. So now we have our uh, sort of improved cars movement in place. And uh, actually looking at our, at our game, we can see that the, the camera actually shifted and uh, it's on 30 now, even though I said 20. And it's because when I enabled the, the aim, it actually changed this. So let's bring it back to 20, which is the value that we want to have. So I very quickly built a fake tunnel here just to uh, try the feel of our car. Uh, so now with all the changes we have, uh, it should feel quite nicely, hopefully. And uh, so I've increased the size of our collider here and yeah, it, it, yeah, it moved fairly nicely. Maybe uh, actually the increase the dampening here um, to match the same uh, when we are returning so it doesn't feel too snappy and uh, the good part is if we're going 
uh, below multiple obstacles after each other, then it will go down and then it won't go up too quickly because then it will have to go down again. Actually, I would change the dampening even more here. So let's make it to two and a half. Because otherwise it can feel a little bit um, like uh, it's uh, wobbling back and forth a little bit too much. So uh, I'll make an example of this. So if we take our, this is the size of my collider actually on the top there. And uh, if I move this here, uh, then we have two of these fake uh, tunnels. So let's uh, take it for a spin. And we can see that yeah, the camera is moving down. It moved up a little bit and down. So that feels good, I think. Uh, otherwise, you're going to have this up and down movement. I'd like to give a shout out to our Patreon supporters. It helps us with every single contribution that we can get. So please consider supporting us on Patreon. The link is in the description. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.